All right, let's check some Sony Xperia 1 Mark 6. Fingerprint scanner is right where power button is. Experience is very similar to Google Pixel with somewhat naked or how it's called stock Android experience. But I feel like it is a little bit shallow and misses lots of functionalities of other phones. Not so much is going on here. But animations are smooth. Haptic vibration is pleasant. Out of the box Sony misses lots of applications. There was no calculator, for example, no voice recorder. I had to find Music Pro app on the internet. You can download it from the Play Store, but pretty much that's all. We have lots of Google's bloatware, like Google TV, Safety, Meet. Some of the stuff I had already deleted. I don't know why, but out of the box Call of Duty Warzone was pre-installed. <laughs> I don't know why it is more important than calculator and voice recorder, but okay. We have command center. It has pleasing animations on each of the buttons. Sounds are very nice. Reminds me of old Xperia phones, Sony PlayStation Portable, PlayStation 3 and so on. This phone is not very customizable out of the box. It has global firmware, we have Android Auto, full support of Wear OS devices. Correct me if I am wrong, but I do not see any possible way to clone the apps here. Yeah. Battery, we have stamina mode. This is Sony's power saving mode, battery care. I love that I can set physical limit, for example, 80%, 90% charging limit. This way we can save our battery health long term. I want this feature to be implemented in all modern devices. Sound and vibrations. Pretty basic stuff. Vibration and haptics, we can control the amount. Display, image quality, we have creator mode, powered by Cine Alta. <laughs> it has REC 2020 color gamut and 10 bit color space. Standard mode, for more vivid colors, the same on Sony Bravia TVs. We can enhance video image, real time HDR video image enhancements. This is how it looks. You see on the left low contrast and on the right we have more clarity, more small detail sharpness and contrast levels, more pop from the image. Nice. We can control size of the interface, size of the text, dark scene, and here lock screen. Lots of people love always on display features, but here it is very limited. We can see only clocks, analog clock, digital clock, Sony clock. For example, this. You can see analog clock with information. On global device we have all our notifications. So pretty limited stuff. Nothing mind blown here. Operation and view. Here we have one hand mode, pretty basic Android and iOS stuff, very familiar to all people, but I kinda dislike it. Gladly we have this side sense. For example, you see this line, we can drag and hold, release and it will open dashboard. We can turn on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, make a screenshot and if we drag this side panel up and release we can open many applications, for example in this small window, pop-up, 
or split screen, it is called multi window. Let's open browser and clock. Here we have split screen, on the top we have web browser, and on the bottom we have our second application. We have some pre installed live wallpapers, and pretty much it. Just the basic stuff. In security, we do not have any face unlock here, nothing. Only fingerprint scanner works. So, Sony does not have any face unlock for multiple generations already. So, this is pretty much it. I do not see anything interesting in this smartphone right now. If you know something cool that you can make with your Sony Xperia device, please let us know in the comment section so we can try it. Let's quickly overview camera app. The same story here, nothing special, nothing major. We have Pro application. It looks very similar to the mirrorless cameras. We have FN menu. The tricky part is that it is not very comfortable to use. For example, I will choose RAW. Now I cannot choose continuous shooting mode. It brings this annoying window. Also, I can choose dynamic range optimizer. But I can't choose computation. If I go to the JPEG, then I choose... Oh, I can't. I need to turn off computation. Then I need to go to the HDR. Alright. Now I'm pressing continuous shooting. And all the settings reset. Very annoying. Alright. No video in this pro mode. Bokeh is a portrait mode with fake blur. You can control the amount of it and pretty much it. Basic photo application. We can switch lenses and choose color profile. Not so much here, natural, vivid, film nostalgic and bright. I just turn it off completely. The coolest part here is that we can control our focus. I tapped on the screen and look. It is tracking. Tracking the object or subject. Also, you can see that we can control exposure compensation and white balance, which is pretty cool. That's all in this mode, video, nothing major here except one special thing. Look, we have 120 frames per second in 4K resolution on all camera models, ultrawide, main sensor and telephoto models. I love this, I enjoy slow motion and I want to see implementation of the slow motion in all modern devices that can capture videos. But except 4K 120 frames per second, nothing interesting in slow motion department. So I find this tab pretty useless. And let's press more. We have telephoto macro, 48 megapixels mode, bokeh video, by the way, live streaming and panorama. That's all. And one cool trick I want to show you. We are in the pro mode. Let's press continuous shooting. <laughs> Very cool. Let's press high. High plus. It's like a machine gun. And of course we have HDR continuous shooting. But I find image quality kinda bad. <laughs> I do not suggest you to use this mode at all. So that's all. Let's see other smartphones. 